Hello and welcome to All Aboard and a brand new week. Thank you all for joining us once again. Uh, we hope that you've had a fantastic summer holidays. Now here we are in September, looking forward to autumn, colder months, but uh, cozying up around the fire with a nice coffee and what have you, sitting down with a good board game. So uh, this week, uh, before we uh, kick off, we just want to explain that we have some changes to our opening hours for September. You can see them here. So if you'd like to pause and zoom in, you can check them out. They'll also be at the end of the video as well for you to take a look at and scattered around our social media and the shop as well. Um, Basically, my wife and I are celebrating our 10 year wedding anniversary this year and we are off to Norway on a cruise. Um, so uh, between the 11th and the 23rd, there'll be some slight adjustments. Basically, we'll uh, close in the shop for some hours. We will still be open for the evenings between the 11th and the 23rd, as well as the weekends as normal. But we've put up everything, all the dates for the whole month just to make it a bit clearer so that you can see absolutely uh, everything there and uh, there's no confusion. Um, it also means that uh, this uh, this week's episode of All Aboard will be covering the next uh, couple of weeks as well. Um, so we are going to dive right on in. So first up, as always, is our product highlight. Uh, we start off this week with a Villainous, which is uh, this week's game of the week. Um, as we are away, Villainous will have the distinction of running as game of the week, at least until we uh, get back from our holiday. So, uh, in this, each player takes an aval of an iconic Disney villain. So, in this box, for example, we've got Maleficent, Captain Hook, uh, Ursula, and Prince John. Uh, each uh, villain has their own game board with their own locations on that are perfect. So yeah, a person to that um, to that villain, so it'll be uh, locations from uh, the relevant movie or franchise that they're part of. They also have their own mission uh, that they're trying to complete uh, by doing things in certain orders or by having certain heroes in places, and each player is attempting to do just that with their own um with their own villain. So it's got a very asymmetric feel to it because each villain wins in different ways. The game board for each villain is set up slightly different. So there's four actions on each location, but uh, depending on the villain, those actions uh, can and will uh, change uh, between all of the different locations. Uh, each player also has a fake deck. The fake deck, um, sorry about that, the fake deck is a a uh, deck that is played against you and will have um, heroes uh, from that franchise. So, for example, for Prince John, it's going to have um, Robin Hood, you know, Friar Tuck, Little John, uh, Maid Marian and such. And these are cards that will be set up to try and uh, get in your way. So they go at the top of your board, uh, taking away two of your actions. You then need to be able to defeat them in order to... Uh, uh, remove them and then take those actions back. Really good game. Um, it's one that, because of its asymmetry um, and its uh, individual win conditions, makes it a bit hard to explain to people. But once you're into the game, um, it's fairly straightforward. Basically, on your turn, you're going to move to a location. You're going to take those uh, up to the four available actions that are there. And then it's going to go to the next person. So it is fairly straightforward. But um, I can understand that with the asymmetry. It makes it seem maybe a little bit harder. Because you can't help out someone else really. Because uh, you don't know what their weak condition is. Or really what they're trying to achieve. But um, absolutely amazing game. Great card game. Um, if you pick up uh, Disney Villainous today. You also get a... Um, exclusive Lorcana promo card, which is the other Disney uh, card game, a trading card game. You can only get it in this box, um, so a big, big draw there. So next up, we're taking a look at a few games from uh, Big Potato Games. Here we've got Herd Mentality. This is a game about trying to uh, stay inside the herd, so I'm not thinking outside the box uh, and what have you. Uh, so each round, um, 
someone will pick a question, will pick a sort of an opinion thing. So, for example, would you rather have robot arms or robot legs? Yeah. Instead of um, you answering what you think you would, like in a normal game, like you'd be like, oh, yeah, I'd have robot legs because of this. You need to sit down and think, like, right, what do I think most of the people around this table playing right now are going to pick? Um and then you might pick, like, you know what, well, they'd go for robot arms because these guys love lifting stuff and want to be like a superhero. I'll put robot arms. If um, the majority of answers are the same, uh, then uh, they all get a point. If there are any individual answers, they don't get any point. However, if there's only one answer uh, that is the odd one out, so save. Um, yeah, a group of seven people, uh, eight people, seven people said robot arms, one person said robot legs, the person with the robot legs gets the pink cow, uh, and that means that whilst they have the cow, no matter how many points that they accrue, they cannot win the game, they need to be able to get rid of the pink cow. Really good fun, really silly, um, absolute blast, probably one of our top sellers in terms of party games, and probably in terms of the shop as well, uh, just an absolutely amazing game, can thoroughly, thoroughly recommend. Our next game from Big Potato is the Chameleon Picture Edition. This is a uh, deduction game where you are trying to uh, work out who the chameleon is. The objective of the game um, uh, partly is to uh, uh, identify one of the uh, images on the uh, card. So you've got this grid card here uh, and it's got all these different shapes on it uh, and then uh, you have another deck of cards that you shuffle. Uh, you put that card into your own viewer and then it will show you what symbol it matches up to. Uh, and everyone does that, including the chameleon. However, the chameleon's viewer is actually obscured. It has the chameleon logo in the middle, so they don't know what it is. Then everyone's going to go around the table and they are going to uh, describe the thing with another word. So you have to be pretty quick fire with this. Uh, have a little moment to think about your words. Um, and then once everyone's given the words, you're then going to um, try and work out who the comedian is based on uh, what everyone said. So you want to kind of go um, a little bit vague to try and uh, put off the comedians so they don't instantly know what it is. But you also don't want to go super obvious uh, either um, um, or too too vague um and people think that you're the comedian really really good fun absolutely love the original edition and the pictures edition uh just takes it up a notch as well makes it a little bit easier to just get straight into the game really really good fun available now in store and then finally we have got uh blockbuster now for our younger uh customers out there who may not have had the uh pleasure of uh looking in blockbuster um or perusing one um, outside of the Netflix series. Uh, it was a video rental shop where you could rent all types of uh, uh, films as well as video games. They did the whole range of sweets and snacks and uh, drinks as well. And this is what we would do instead of Netflix. Uh, basically, um, uh, I believe as late as 2013, we were uh, still going to uh, our local blockbuster before it sadly shut down. Uh, in this game, though, uh, you are trying to guess a variety of different uh, movies, um, uh, video games, and TV series. So you start off with a head-to-head -head round, um, and it'll be any kind of category. Each team picks one player from their team to go to the head-to-head, and they keep going on that until someone uh, either runs out of time or uh, gets a wrong answer. Then the winner of the head-to-head -head will pick six uh, cards from the top of the other deck. They will look at them, pick three for themselves, give the other three to the other team. So ostensibly, you're trying to pick the ones that you think you're going to have the best best go at. Uh, you then choose uh, one that you're going to describe in one word, one that you're going to quote, and one that you're going to act. So um, uh, you better have to get your thinking caps on for this bit. Um, because there's going to be some certain challenges uh, within this, for example. Um, uh, so one word, uh, for example, uh, you might have X-Men there, you might say mutants. Uh, quote it, um, 
a few good men, you can't handle the truth, for example, or act it, um, I don't know, high school musical, you might start dancing or something like that. Uh, and it keeps going like that until uh, one team has won uh, eight cards, two cards in each uh, category. Uh, as I said, absolutely amazing fun. Um, it gets really silly, especially when everyone's trying their best to uh, uh, guess the answers. Um, but yeah, absolutely amazing. Really good fun. And for a long time, uh, probably was my favourite. Um, but that keeps switching around with things like her mentality, snakes and chameleon. Um, so yeah, those are all available in the shop to buy. These are also all available to play in the shop as well. So if you're thinking of coming down uh, at any point, uh, either during the daytime hours or the evenings, uh, you can play these uh, as part of your uh, board game experience here. So next up on the product highlight, we do have some games arriving uh, hopefully this week from Thames and Cosmos. We will have uh, Cities, um, we will have the new advent calendar for their uh, Christmas advent calendar, and we will have um, uh, The Gang, which is a uh, trick-taking game based on poker. So super, super excited for those. Absolutely love the Cosmos games. Uh, especially their small box ones, uh, they are the masters, in my opinion, of trick-taking games at this moment. And then from Hachette Board Games, we should have Loot come in, which is a nice, light, family weight um, Euro game where you are uh, spreading across a uh, landmass, uh, trying to uh, take over castles and keeps and various different resources with your Viking clan. I uh, got to play this and demo it at the UK Games Expo earlier this year. An absolute blast. And now it's coming as a late summer hit. Uh, cannot wait at all. And there will, of course, be a copy available in the shop to play as well. So, on to our events. So, everything, as I said, will be running as normal throughout the entirety of September. Including the 11th to the 23rd whilst we are away. Um... Everything the evening events will be open in between sort of six and a half six. So our regular D and D groups, Pathfinder, Cthulhu, things like that. I will chat to you all individually as I see you this week, just to give you the heads up uh, uh, individually on that. But for anyone else who may be coming along for our uh, board games nights on Wednesdays and Fridays, uh, just be aware that uh, it will be sometime between six and six thirty that the shop will be open. Uh, um, and uh, if you try to phone the shop itself, obviously there'll be no answer because there'll be no one there uh, during the day. But as I said every event will be running as normal uh, throughout uh, September. Uh, we do also have some uh, special events coming up as well. On the 13th of September, we are running a launch party for the Altered Trading Card Game. This is a card game uh, released by Equinox, the minds behind games like uh, Dixit, which is an absolutely amazing storytelling game. Um, and uh, in uh, Altered, uh, you are exploring a variety of different landscapes as your hero and your companion are making their way towards each other. There's no combat in the game. Uh, it's fully exploration and uh, has a sort of area majority aspect uh, running in it as well which uh, has uh, absolutely drawn me to the game very very unique style of trading card game as well which is uh, really a great thing to say after 30 plus years of trading card games uh, uh, harking back to the early 90s so um, if you're interested in um, coming along to that it is free for everyone who buys a starter deck so the starter deck is a thirteen ninety five that gives you a full deck um, to play, um, and uh, you can get cracking on with that as well. It also gives you all of the uh, cards that you need for like the exploration. Gives you a play mat as well for each player. Uh, so that is thirteen ninety five for that. We'll also be selling uh, booster packs and additional um, uh, starter decks as well. We will also be doing a 10% discount if you buy all six starter decks. So uh, you get a nice uh, uh, discount on those. And the uh, boosters uh, we will be selling in 
quantities up to a maximum of 12 boosters uh, per player. We've got six boxes at the moment, so we're going to just kind of gauge that, see how that goes, and then maybe uh, release some sealed boosters later on. These are Kickstarter exclusive ones as well, uh, so they will have uh, all the cool Kickstarter stuff uh, from their campaign. Um, and uh, then on the 15th of um, September is our next winner box for Lorcana. Um, we've already spoken to a lot of the community out there. We have asked people to make sure that they book in by the 10th. That is my last day um, here at the uh, shop uh, for 12 days. Um, so uh, if you make sure that you are booked in uh, by the 10th, either via the website or by calling me, uh, then we can make sure that you're booked in, you're on the melee system as well. And then uh, Matt uh, will be covering the Sunday itself, along with uh, Harry, who is our Lorcana store champion, who will be helping him uh, uh, set up the pairings and uh, giving out the sheets there. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, uh, book sooner rather than later, as the uh, booking period will be uh, closing on the... 10th of September and that is £20 per person uh, kicking off at 11 o'clock on the uh, 15th of September. Uh, then during the week um, after that, so the week commencing the 16th, uh, we have the release of Dungeons and Dragons uh, Revised Edition 2024. So it is finally here, there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of years about 1D&D, about 5.5 uh, however we want to call it, uh, I believe that they're just sticking to uh, the revised edition, so it's still 5th edition, um, uh, still compatible with everything that's come before it. So we will have the uh, uh, player's handbooks uh, ready for the week commencing the 16th of September. Uh, the alternate cover ones have been delayed by a month, so those will be available in... Um, October. So if you were after the alternate cover, uh, just be aware that those are delayed. Uh, if you really want the book and you don't want to have to wait for the alternate cover, then we will have uh, uh, books available for you. Uh, not all the books will be available. They are doing a staggered release. So uh, the Player's Handbook is first, followed by the Dungeon Master's Guide in, I think, around November time. And then coming up in February is the... Um, uh, Monster Manual, there we go. Um, so really, really excited about this. We have a massive Dungeons & Dragons community here um, and we'll be doing videos sort of uh, after the release to uh, sort of go over the book as well uh, and have a chat to people uh, about any changes. Uh, but super, super excited for that. If you haven't put your pre-orders in yet, then you can just give me a call or an email, say, hey Adam, put behind one of those books for me uh, and uh, we'll make sure that, that is done so. Uh, as I said, if you want the alternate cover, that will be uh, now delayed till October. Cool, so that about wraps up everything uh, for this week and a glance at the rest of September. Uh, I do thank you all for uh, sitting here uh, with me through this um, and I hope that you all have a, uh, a wonderful end to your summer holidays, uh, autumn coming up ahead of us, uh, cooler days ahead but nonetheless just as fun uh, and perhaps even more reason to sit down with a board game as the weather gets cold as well thanks for watching guys as always and we'll see you in the boardroom